Right, and you know what? I think now is a good time to begin the magnetizing process. Zoom back out a bit for this. All right, so I've got the body, I've got a set of arms, and I have a head. We shall see how well this goes down. So what I really need to figure out first is the angle at which I put the head magnet in. I'm probably going to have it as level with the foot. Oh, for goodness sake, my fingers, bro. Where did the head go? That's probably one of the last parts of yourself you want stuck in the warp. There he is. Okay. Yes, as I was saying, I might have it as level to the floor as I can. Well, before we do anything, it's time to get drilling. First, I'll do the arms because uh, that's a process that I know and understand. Well, I know and understand both, but you know what I mean. There's less uncertainty that way. Time to find out if after all this loving painting, I can do this without utterly destroying him. And a poke here on the other side. Excellent. Cool. Seems to be sitting super evenly. Cool. Here we go. Not quite perfectly even, but near as damn it. There we are. Fairly central down. Yeah, something like that. Now he's a holy man. And to supervise, I shall bring out Matt of Magnets, as he brings me great comfort in these dark times. And I can use his magnets to make sure that I'm matching polarities correctly. Right, that's a stack of six magnets, just there. All right, well on that, if I just, eh. Single magnet, there we go. Now I know for fact it's facing the right way for arms. Same with that one. Cool, let's do a quick tester with this here magnet, see how it sits. There, yeah, it sits in absolutely perfectly. That's good, that's good. All right, the fact that it's not perfectly in the middle is not such an issue. Oh, there we go. I was about to say that I had no super glue coming out. I was about to get very upset. All right then. Taking this magnet and slide it in. It's nice and flush. Perfectly flush, in fact. Excellent. Good, that's that one. This one's not going to be quite as pretty. Because of that deformity, I can give it a lick of paint, and then it'll be hidden by the pauldron anyway when the time comes, so that's not such a worry. We'll drive it a bit closer towards the front now. There we go. It's a very gentle sanding. Perfect. Let's see how this one fits, being very careful that it doesn't fall in because that would suck, so you know what, I'm just going to keep it... Oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn it, the magnet flew through. It attached to that one. Ah, all right, well, that one's lost, unless I can... Nah. All right, oh, well, at least it's not rattling around, so you know what? Lesson learned. At least I know it fits in the hole. Oh, no. Should have done that one first, really. All right. Gonna have to be very cautious of that with this one. Don't want to lose any more. Uh, should have seen that coming, I suppose. All right, here we go. Okay, come on, cooperate. Don't go too far in. Oh, I did it again. Okay, this is going to be interesting. I'm gradually losing magnets to this fella. Now I'm hoping if I use this, hopefully the fact that this is pulling on it as well will help mitigate it at least to some extent. Now it just doesn't want to go through. All right. Let's get something a bit flatter. I found that these scissors were very good for previous attempts. Okay, there we are. All right, so I only took the sacrifice of two magnets. I guess I've never dealt with that before because I've never made such a wide opening before. Because like on uh, Matt here, Matt of Magnets, the holes are done more or less perfectly, obviously by pure luck it would seem, so the magnets didn't fly through. Good, okay, we'll leave that to stick. I'll attach these again to that so I know which way around these ones will go. Look at them gorilla arms. There we go, that's the neck of his neck cut off. Right, Matt's Yeah. Let's see what we need. Well, amongst other things, I need two more magnets because two of them have been lost. Thankfully, it only cost me about a tenner for 300 magnets, so that's pretty good. So now we shall match that. Try and get that lined up. Yeah, that seems all right. Nice. All right, and now the final piece of this very messy magnet puzzle. Puddle? Puzzle. Go on, Matt, you can watch. He is drilling in from the top. Maybe I'll even be able to get some of those magnets back. All right, I'm just going to have to do kind of what I did last time. Well, I say last time, what I did with Matt here, because if I try and put the magnet in, it's just going to clatter around trying to get to the shoulders. So if I stick the glue in right now, there we go. I'll get the actual magnet for it, put it there, and then jam it in this way. Nice. It's flush. Oh, dang it. All right. Uh, the principle works, but where is it? I have a pencil around here. I think I can just poke it with a pencil because that's obviously not magnetic. But my pencil appears to have gone AWOL. Pencil? Nah, here's one. Alright, and once again, 
to hit in, pull him out. Nice. And using this pencil, push down from above. There we go. Okay. That seems to be nice and flush. Nice. All right, cool. Looking down a bit, very brooding, but still. All right then. Cool. Obviously, he hasn't got his pauldrons on yet. So the principle is sound. Nice. Okay. I wonder why that wants to stay up. Interesting. Still, nice. Very cool. I like it. I like it. That's what I like to see. Ha ha. Sorry, Matt. Don't look. Right, my friends. So, I may have used a little to fast forward time and get some magnetizing done. Yes, indeed. Every single torso is now magnetized. And not just that. I'll just move that out of the way. Also, I have magnetized every single arm. I've magnetized all the doubles, just like that. And I've magnetized every single arm as well. Here we go. And of course, I've magnetized all of the helmets, including our sergeant helmet as well, as you saw. And they all look rather swell for it, I believe. So I could have him looking like this, 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 or like this, when you just need loads of guns. And of course, the awesome part is that just having a torso with a different posture completely changes how it looks. It's really cool. Very, very nice. And then just having the arms down makes it slightly more relaxed. There we go. The one thing I have noticed, which is quite interesting, is how tight the arms actually are to the torso. Like on some models, I think, ironically, the arms are picked are actually the loosest. Let me find another. Now you can see there how it pivots, not so much on the magnet, but on where it's pinching the model. Obviously, it's not a huge problem per se. I'll just do it like that if I have to. Take it off. Slide it back on for another direction. But still, interesting to know. Very right, cool. Obviously, they don't have their pauldrons yet either. That'll hide a lot of the blemishes. But yeah, overall, I am very pleased. Another thing that's incredibly handy is this little doodad here. This came with the magnets, and the magnets are more attracted to it than they actually are to each other. Which is incredibly handy, especially if you want to hold anything the magnets attached to while you, say, highlight it. Let's see if we can't do some... Actually, wait a minute. You know what I need to do before I do highlights? The eyes. Wah. The eyes. Alright then. Here we go. Nearly excellent. A little bit in the corner there, but not too bad. Obviously you guys are ultra zoomed in, so you probably see more of the deficiencies than I do. Yeah, not too bad. I think I'll give that a solid maybe 8 out of 10, if I do say so myself. Nice. And now to do the others. I'm going to tilt you much further down. There we go. So that way you can actually see what I'm doing. Wouldn't that be lovely? Nice, that eye went well. Now I went okay. Okay. Nice, not bad. Ooh, keep doing the top of the eye just a bit too much. There we go. Not too bad. He's got the big eye. Giving him all the stink eye. That's still not so bad when you look at it from a more, there we go, reasonable distance. That cool. It's because I forgot to trail the excess off of my brush. I did too much on this one. Nice. That went very, very well. Cool. There we go. That one's all right, I suppose. Should put a little bit more in the eyes. A bit dark. There we go. Tink, tink, tink. I nearly spilled a bit, but never mind. Very good. Right. And this is the last of the blue helms. Let's end this with a bang. And I mean a good bang. Cool. Very cool. Right. And for this fine fellow, he is going to get some warpstone green in his eye. There we go. Very nice. Let's see if we can get it from this side too. Excellent. Cool. That's one eye done. And push it all the way to the... Oh no, it's alright. Go. Thought I spilled over real bad then. Cool. Again, you can probably see loads of issues with it given that your guys are zoomed in. Very nice. I like it. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do with these guys is add the lead belcher details. So that's things like the vents on the jetpack and the metallic bits on the helmets. Right. And I think I will begin with... Yeah, I'll begin with the models themselves. Cool. And by the models themselves, I mean the torso. Nice, there we go. Now I'll do that to the rest. That's two. That's three. That's four. Five. Halfway. That's six or so. Seven. Eight. Nine. And that's ten. Excellent. Next, it's time to add the silver onto the helm. There's one. A bit of spill up by the earpiece there, but still. Pretty good. Excellent. Cool. Cool, cool. Oh, how much sense it would have made if I had done these silver bits on the helmet before the Nuln Oil way back when. Ah oh, well. This way is fine too. Excellent. Nice. And then the Sarge. Cool. 
Very cool. While I have this guy here, I'm going to quickly paint this skull. Liberator gold. I know that's probably not the accurate one, but it isn't full on gold from what I've seen. Plus, I don't wish to rob from the redness. It would also really be helpful if it were to come off my brush. Come on, do it. Tiny bit of spill there, unfortunately, but oh well. Nice. And next on the agenda, we're going to highlight the heads with some of this Fenrisian grey. Not too much mind, otherwise it'll be a bit overbearing. And of course, you, Sarge, are not on the party list. Damn, well that went very well. Well, hopefully I can recreate that with the others. Then let's quickly adjust the brow. A little much on the nose, I think. <laughs> a little too on the nose. Let's see if I can't quickly rectify that before it gets too dry. There we go. Very nice. Excellent. Damn, I'm very pleased with that. Nice. Yes, I want to give many thanks to the very knowledgeable people in my comments for advising me on how best to do highlights. Because obviously a lot of people said to use the side of the brush, which you know, is fairly obvious, but there were some more subtle things as well about the fact that you have to in some ways treat it similar to dry brushing in regards to how little of it you actually have on the brush. Certainly for the finer details. So yes, thank you one and all. As we can see here, it's working wonders, especially on the smaller details. There are still some moments where I have to use uh, there you go, the tip like that. Well, I've just given him some epic brows. Can I wipe you off? To have been so light it dries very quickly but still that's still pretty cool i think even if it is a bit of a rage brow nice bit much in the gap there oh well still pretty cool very nice a little bit got in the red of his eye there but never mind tiny little smatterings getting onto the main paint but barely noticeable frankly nice it's very subtle i like it i like it a lot i think what pleases me the most is that you guys are ultra zoomed in and yet it still looks pretty decent even through that i mean i probably should add more really i'm probably doing it a bit too light but Oh, well. And by that I mean compared to the rest of the model, not like compared to some global standard or anything like that. When have I ever adhered to those? And this one is six. Do, 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 do. That's seven. Very good. That's eight. Boop. Let's get you done, number nine. Number nine had some weird things happen on his brows, but he's done. Very cool. I think number nine was the knackered one, but still. There we go. And lastly, the sergeant helm. Before going any further, I'm going to try and sort out that... Uh, little spillage of gold there because it's very very frustrating i'm probably gonna have to do a tiny dab of something followed by a bit of micro shading for it not ideal but there we go yeah all right while that blob dries we will do the shading well this is interesting i go to get my wasdaka red and it's gone the spot where it's supposed to be is empty i'm looking around and i can't see it anywhere it's probably been called to a war or something where is it aha found it it was on the floor, so I'm going to guess that the great unclean one got to it. Put a smidgen on my wet palette. Right, so hopefully that's watered down enough. Let us see, shall we? Oh, good. Because I'd, I dried brushed him with both Wazdaka and Evil Sun Scarlet. So I was hoping that some heavy Evil Sun's highlights would still show up, which they are. And there we go. Got a little bit near the skull there, but overall not too bad. Not too bad at all. Right, now let's see how well the head highlights matches up with the the body itself, shall we? Let's grab a random head. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Alright, that matches up pretty well. Nice. Let's try another random pair. You and you. Yeah, alright, not too bad, not too bad. Of course, we should also try the sergeant real quick. Come here, Sarge. Excellent. Okay, so I'm about to move on to the pauldrons, but before I do, I'm going to give all the silvers on here a very gentle wash with Noln oil. Very, very gentle. Probably watered down as well. Oh god, cat, get your, get your head out of me wet palette. Got a great unclean one just off camera. Being great and being unclean. Oh, how about that? It was a package, ooh. And I don't mean a package that will get Slaanesh excited, I mean it was a parcel. A delivery. Cat, leave my brush alone. Got a cat trying to nibble the end of my brush. It's not a lot of Noln oil, but it just adds a bit of grime. Nice. And cat, don't eat the Noln oil. That's that's really stupid. Just just don't do it. Oh, looks like Sarge is next. Oh, hello. Sarge's neck fell off. Interesting. God's cat, he just stepped in my puddle of Macrag blue. I hope it was dry. Was it dry? Yeah, it was dry. Okay. You're off the hook, cat, but now you are definitely being evicted. Ah, oh, you're such a lump. Don't look at me like that. You lost your rights when you stepped in me paint. Silly boy. All right, let's fix up this guy's neck before it turned out to be a sacrifice to resummon the great unclean one. 
there better be super glue in here. It's fairly central. Right, you Sarge can go sit in the corner for a bit while I do your comrades, as in paint them, not do them. The difference is small, but it is a difference. Nice. Do, 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 do. And the last of the blues. Nice. Alright. I think I'll just quickly do Sarge while just holding him with my grubby mitts. Cool. Alright, so now the pauldrons here. It's probably time for me to take them off these, really. Plus, I've also got to paint the uh, undersides that are stuck to these bits of blue tack. Okay. There we go. Yeah, you can see they're still grey on the underside, but nothing a quick brush of paint won't solve. Then after these pauldrons, it will be a case of um, adding the highlights to the guns, and then I think we're done. Well, I say that, there's a few extras I can do, things like some purity seals and whatnot, but that should be comparatively simple. Right, so these are all the pauldrons that are just simple, straight up pauldrons, and these are going to be the ones that have little tiny extras, even if they're just very slight. Alright, so first, I'm just going to go through them all and paint these grey undersides here. But I'll just be painting them black because they are ultimately going to be gold. Get these off screen because the focus and all that. Nice. That's one. Okie dokie. Now all of these undersides have been painted black along with uh, the special ones which are over here drying off because they won't stand up like these ones will. So while these finish drying off they're more or less done but just to give them a bit of extra time we're gonna put these to one side and what I'm now going to do is add some null oil to all of the guns gun metals. Very good. That's, that's that one. Nice. Well, I'll need to remember to add a screen of some kind. Unless he really is like Buzz Lightyear and he's just talking at a sheet of plastic. Nice. Oh yeah, I'll need to re-go over this uh, strap at some point as well. Oh damn, there's a whole side of silver there I forgot to do. Ah well, you can see it on the side that's obvious, so no worries. For the knives, I'm not going to go all out on the knoll. I'm just sort of going to do the back and along the bottom there, because I like the idea of the blade still being nice and shiny. I'll further highlight that with some Stormhose silver, but still. Right, cool. Right, now that's all the gun metals done. But of course, going over them, I remembered all of the various little details that I have forgotten to do, or said that I would do them at a later date, and then a later date came and went. So, what I think I'm going to do regarding these shells in here, I'm uh, actually not, let me find a better gun for a better example. Here we go. So this Aquila I'm going to do gold, the usual uh, Retributor Armor Gold, Reichlin Flesh Shade, and Liberator Gold. But for in here, I'm going to do these Retributor Armor Gold and then Null Noil, and I'm hoping that'll make a different effect. Man, yeah, really zoomed in, you can see all the errors. There we go. Right, uh, let's do that then. Let's roll. Let's see how this looks. Oh, and my brush just immediately split. Stay pointy, damn it. Man, that bit does not want to stay pointed. Right, there we go. Now let's do this. And it's just split again. Hmm. All right, I think this bristle's gonna get the chop. Not a fan of sacrificing bristles, but it's all I got. Thankfully, I decided to point once more. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt one more time. Let's get this Aquila done. It's already looking swell for it. Nice. And a little bit extra on the finger, it would seem. <laughs> How the heck did that get there? It's Goldfinger. None on that side. All right, cool. Makes my life easier. Sweet. And just because it annoys me, I'm gonna put the tiniest drop of Macrag blue on there. There we go. Nice. All right, so now to see what the other guns have. This one's an Aquila. Well, not an Aquila, it's a skull and wings, but still. It has wings and wings need to be gold. Very nice, very nice. This one too. I need more gold. I mean, who doesn't, but I need more on my brush. Ever since I threatened to snip a bit of the troublesome bristles off this brush, it's cooperated actually, so. Clearly, intimidation tactics work well on brushes. Bit of a spill on the top, but never mind. Still pretty cool. Give that a quick dab with Abaddon. There we go, that's better. Nearly forgot the bolt shells. That was very silly of me. Nice. Right, now this one here has uh, parchment, so... I'm obviously going to come back to that. I've said that so many times, I'll come back to stuff and I forget, but... No forgetting, not this time. In the meantime, we shall get these shells done. Cool. <laughs> Loaded my brush way too much, but... Actually landed pretty decently. Not that I would trust that to ever happen again, of course. Just accidentally did a light bit, just off the wing, but never mind. Right, and that's all the gold bits on these guys. A few of them need a bit of clean up, but I'll do that once they're dry. Very nice. And now moving on to these ones. These are the ones that have the uh, parchment bits on the side. So I'm going to treat them the way I do purity seals. Now I say that, I'm wondering, do I begin it with a base of Wraithbone or Morgast Bone? I'm going to try Wraithbone. Right then, let us begin. Oh, my brush is already split. This brush is a nightmare, man. Why are you split so much, bruh? Stop it. That's the best I'm going to get. God, this brush, man. Why are you being like this, bruh? Probably due to the months of abuse I've put it through. Okay. There we go. It's not perfect, but it's one. I blame the brush. You know what? 
I think we're going to try a different brush. It'll be slightly bigger, but it might still be better. Right. In fact, I can already tell this is going to be better. You can move. There we go. There we go. A couple small splodges, but fix them later. And that's four. And now the last one. There we go. That's five. Not sure what quite happened with this one. <laughs> it got a bit messy, but never mind. That's cool. All right, so now I'm just going to quickly inspect them all for any small blemishes, like along the top there and just in a bit there, just to paint over with black. Nice. Cool. While I made all that big splodge of blue, I can de-blue. Nice. And next with these two underslung launchers, I'm going to quickly uh, paint up the grenades. I'm going to do them similar to the bolts. going to use some gold on them. Well, not an easy angle to get to this one. There we go. There we go. That's cool. Once it's dry, I'll paint the very tips of them silver. Excellent. Now for his buddy. Do, 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 do. Lovely. There we go. This one was definitely messier. But hey, tidy that up in post. So I'm wondering what to do about the pauldrons. I'm torn between two things. That's either doing the gold trim first or doing the highlights on the blue first. I think the gold trim first, for two reasons. One, I already have some gold in my wet palette. And two, if I did the highlights and then accidentally got a bit of gold on it, that would be a nightmare to clean up. So let's do it that way. Cork! Just wondering how best to stick this, really. All right, I think I'm gonna have to do them half and half. First the top on all of them, and then when that's dry, do the bottom. See, see what I mean? I already, already botched it. All right, I think this process is going to take a small while. <laughs> right then. Let's uh, use some potentially redactable powers and just skip ahead. All right, so now these all have their lovely, lovely gold trim. And I'm doubly glad that I didn't do the highlighting first because a lot of them have various issues. And now, there we go. I was about to say I can't find them. All right, so we shall quickly correct said issues and then we shall get on with the highlighting. Stick them back on here for it, just to make life easier. Right, so let's go and patch these up. Piling on that sweet, sweet McCrag blue. Oh yeah. Oh, it's cool, there we go. They're now in good working order. Worthy of Rabute's boys. All right, so now I am gonna add the highlights of Calgar blue onto them, but obviously I'm not exactly gonna dry brush them. So I'm not sure what the best method is. It's probably just gonna be straight up simple edge highlighting around the sides. All right then, yeah, I think we're gonna do that. Trusty cork time, let's do this. Let's get me a nice splodge of Calgar into my wet palette. Oh, it's a lovely blue, this. With a C, with a zoom in. I said, with a zoom in. No, work, damn you. There we go. That didn't really achieve the effect I was hoping for. <laughs> All right, it's a bit hard on the underside there, but never mind. Never mind. I will see if I can achieve a better result of some form on the next one. Let's see if we go a bit lighter. I have an idea of how I'm going to continue this. I'm going to do all of these edge highlights with the Calgar, and then I'm going to incredibly lightly dry brush it with Calgar. Super lightly. And then do a hard edge of Fimrisian. I'm hoping that will achieve a similar look as how the rest of the models have. All right, cool. Let's do this. As you can see, I approached this without a plan. Probably not my smartest move. Alrighty. Bit much there, but never mind. And I see a bit of gold that I forgot to go over. Quickly do that with another brush. Cool. Do do do. Get that edge. Looking sweet. Or at the very least, let's get that edge looking not awful. Nice. Not bad at all. There we go. Six. Right. Well, I hope this dry brushing idea works well because these aren't the best I've ever done. <laughs> Well, actually, I don't know about that. My skills at highlighting are still questionable. But, right, let us do this. Get that cowgar. Get me dry brush. And let us see how well we can do this. There we go. It's very slight. It's very, very slight. But I think it now matches up a lot closer with how the models look. So that's good. Particularly dry brushing on the top and then working down towards the bottom, getting lighter as I go. Kind of give it a top-down lighting appearance, I hope. If that's my hope. We shall have to see. I'm hoping the gold won't be too affected by it. And again, we shall see. All right, it is very slight, but you can now kind of see how it is a bit brighter on the tops. And it gradually fades down a little bit. There we go. Okay, cool. It is slight. I'm hoping that means it will pair up better with the models in the final forms. All right, cool, good, good, good. All right, so now, of course, I'm gonna add some Fimrisian Gray back to my wet palette, as I think, yep, I've run out. And then we're going to do a single hard edge highlight over the top. Not looking particularly pretty at the moment, but 
I'm having another thought about doing another dry brush, but with Fenrisian just on the very top. What am I doing with this one? <laughs> but yeah, dry brush with Fenrisian just along the very top. Right, cool. Just some slight Fenrisian along the top there. And now to enter the dry brushing again. No idea how this will look. Let us find out. It's part of the fun of being a noob, trying crazy, crazy stuff. Okie dokie. A bit too much still on the brush thing. Thank goodness I did that gently. Oh, you can kind of see what I was going for. Bit of a shine. Don't know what that was, it just fell down. <laughs> I didn't even move. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. I guess the fact that it's difficult to see on camera just shows that it just looks like natural lighting. Yeah, that's good. When I turn it upside down, you can still see it looks like the lighting's coming from below. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. I'm very pleased with that. Now, what fell? Oh, I know. I know what fell. It's this head that still needs to be done at some point. There we go. Down the line. Yeah, with the dry brushing that I did on these, it makes me wonder, was there a need for me to do the edging, the edge highlights that I did? One of these days, when I do another polder, I'll have to do the dry brushing first and see how it looks. Okay, cool. But I think, apart from the uh, special details on some of these, certainly this rope, there. More or less done. Let's do said special detail, shall we? Of which there are only a couple. Actually, the next thing I'm going to do is just give the gold a little bit of a light brush with Reichland Flesh Shade, just to get them to that lovely, lovely look. I think for this, yeah, I'll need to do them individually like this, I think. Wow, there we go. Lovely, lovely. Gives it that nice, almost coppery sheen. I'm also surprised how, with the dry brushing I just did on these shoulders, how it did not affect the gold much, if at all. I mean, I did try for it not to, but I'm just impressed, really. <laughs> when does things ever go my way? And the last one, the fancy one with the rope. Not sure exactly how to do the rope. I looked at the picture, it's kind of light red, so I'm thinking of maybe uh, painting it white and then going over it with some light red layer or something. There we go, that's the shoulders. Nice, get off. And you know what, while I have the right limbed out, I may as well do the gold in these uh, Aquilas here, even though they're not all Aquilas though. In fact, I don't think any of them are Aquilas. Where is this one? Maybe, maybe this one is just a very tiny one. Semantics, don't you know? Very nice. And of course I'm going to do the golds in the magazines with Nolan Oil, give them a different look. Very nice. Cool. Nice and easy. Just how we like it. One of these days I'm going to write myself a list of ways to approach things because my big problem is that I'll do something and then forget to do something else and then by the end, as anyone who's watched my stuff knows, I kind of do everything in a jumbled order rather than in any kind of coherent way. So one of these days, I need to, uh, when I'm more confident anyway, write a plan out in advance. Lovely. I mean, I suppose when I get more confident, that's kind of what will end up happening anyway, albeit one in my head, but I think I probably do need to have it written out as well to help my dumbass. Excellent. Yeah, that was a big splodge of gold there. <laughs> oh dear. He the blingy one. Nice. And the last one. Even better if I actually had some on my brush. There we go. Cool. And you know what? While we're here with our shades, I may as well get started on the non oiling of the rounds in the magazine. Okay. Didn't make much difference, but hey, it's a difference. Oh, blimey. <laughs> I did loads on that one by accident. Come here. There we go. That's good. Very nice. And normal on those two. There we go. Lovely. Now we'll do the other one of that type while we're here. Nice. We're good. Right, so I think... Is this the last one? I think it's the last one. I'll have a quick check through my stuff to be sure. Cool, cool. Oh, no. There's a couple here. Nice. Very good. Right, so now I'm going to attempt something slightly mad. I'm going to attempt to dry brush on the guns. Yes. Despite the fact that I already have loads of details on them, I'm going to try and selectively dry brush a bit of Eschen Grey onto them just to see how it turns out. And this gun just happily volunteered itself. Why am I doing this now, so late in the painting game, rather than much earlier when I should have? We don't know. And we probably never will. It's just one of those mysteries. I mean, I'm hoping, and this is definitely not anything I planned, this is just a side thought, that um, any bits of Esh and Grey that get on any marks there will simply be grime and dirt and dust. And all of that good stuff. At least that's the plan. Well, no, again, there is no plan. That's the hope. The wish. Anyway, let's do this noise. Alright, well, they definitely look a tad grimy. Especially on the front there, where I went a little too close to the barrel for my liking. Is it something I bother doing with the others? Well, I'll tell you what, before I make that decision, I'm now going to do a bit of actual edge highlighting using some Dawnstone. 
And we shall see how that turns out. Get you on my wet palette, dear Dawnstone. Okie dokie. Let us chokey. There we go. And she doesn't look bad at all. Yeah, it's not too bad. Maybe a little bit too much on the ashen grey. Other than that, no, I think it's alright. Very nice. Right then. Now just to do that with all the other guns. Let's do this one next real quick. Light. Dry brush. Weather. Is that where more bullets would be? I did not spot that. Hang on. We found another box, Mac. You know what? I can't be bothered. <laughs> we'll just leave it. I'll do it another time. There we go. It's very slight, but I think it does add something. Just a bit of this dry brushing. Yeah, nice edge highlights. Very nice. There we go. Nice. And you know what? Just to sate one's curiosity, I think. Let's get this guy. Let's give him the gun we just shaded. Very nice. Now how about some pointy fingers? Yeah, good pointy fingers. Then we'll give him a head. Okay, cool. So then, of course, the only thing he now needs are pauldrons, which we have here. It should be dry. This now seems like a good idea to test what I have in mind for how I'm going to actually stick the pauldrons. Anyway, I have here some blue tech. I'm thinking of getting the minutest amount. Super thin, super small. And just putting it inside the pauldron. Not a high-tech solution, but frankly, sometimes you don't need a high-tech solution. Just stick that in. All right, cool. Let's quickly do the same with the other. I should do it right. Okay, cool. Right, that's good. That's sticking. So obviously I know that this arm here is a bit of an odd one. In fact, can I possibly cool it down? All right, well, damn. Okay. Not too bad at all. Go a little higher up. Right, you know what? We'll try a different arm with him. It did stick, though. It did indeed stick. Oh, I know. The other one that we added the highlights to was the reloading one. So let's give him a reload. He's even looking down. Put pauldron on and pauldron on. Quickly readjust this, trying to find the best way to stick them. Probably closer to the front rather than the top. All right. Nice. There we go. A little bit of blue tack sticking out there, but I can deal with it. The principle works. Blue tack does work. Okay, good. Now the model itself, minus the base, is essentially complete. Just need to finish up all the others. Looks very good. I'm very pleased with it, but too early to celebrate. They are not yet done. Eh. All right then, well now begins the long and arduous task of getting all these guns done. A bit heavy handed on that one. There we go, that's better. There we go. Right, I think it's time for some more. Right, so that is all the guns with their highlights done. Let me try and get an example out. There we go. See how I've added the bits of the Dawnstone on around the box? It's more or less similar to that for all of them. There we go. All right, cool beans. So, with that done, so next, I'm just going to take these knives and I'm going to dry brush a little Stormhost Silver onto the edges of the blades themselves. My hope is that it will look pretty decent. We shall see. There we go. Nice. I like that. In fact, look side by side. Yeah, you can see much more shine on the Stormhost. Cool. Nice. Lovely bit of shine. You know what, we'll have a smidgening of that to uh, the mag. There we go. It's not much, but it's a nice little thing. Same with its brother. Nice. All right, so now I'm just going to quickly fish out the guns that have the parchment on the side. I was meant to keep them separate at all times, but I forgot. And we are going to start layering things onto them. Is that all of them? There we go. All right. So now I'm going to add a little bit of your shabby bone to it. Not too much, just a very light layer. Oh damn, you can tell when a paint needs a shake, look at that. It's like a sludge. Here we go, much better. With that and some water. Whoa, I made that way too wet. I will get my ratios right one day. I think it's still a bit too thin, let's have a quick look. No, it's alright actually, I just utterly failed at keeping it on the, uh, on the shape. Need to go back over this one at some point down the line as it's got uh, lots of spill underneath that bit. Bit of roll. Into that one. Nice. Cool. There we go. Nice. And while they dry, I know what we can very quickly do. We can very quickly just uh, do up a screen on these. Let's uh, get a good angle on this, shall we? All right, I'm thinking to myself, I will base them both, the screens, with Caliban green. A lovely deep green, this. Shake, shake, shake. Can't really see it there, can we? Well, let me get some, try and get some light. Well, I'm going to hope that you guys can see it because on my screen, it's not very visible. There we go, so they've got a nice green base now. Now I'm gonna think of adding an interesting layer to them. I have an idea. What if I am to add to these a very light layer, a thin layer of Araman blue, and then after that, a little bit of this technical, this Tesseract glow. I just, I'm curious to see what that would do. So we'll let that dry off real quick. Oh yeah, something else it needs doing. See, I have this uh, hand here, has the uh, black on the inside. This one does not have black on the inside, so 
we'll get this thing blacked up. It's been bothering me for a while seeing one with the properly coloured black inner hand and the other without it. Nice. Excellent. Let that dry off. I'm glad that's done because that was really annoying me. Alright, so now these are dry and clinging to each other. Get off. There we go. So now I'm going to take a bit of this Araman blue and thin it right down. Hopefully this plan works. I think I've made it more water than paint. Alright. Yeah, it looks good. I'll just quickly sort of wipe the edge around it. There we go. Cool. And yeah, it looks look pretty cool. It looks a lot brighter in person than on my camera, so again, I hope it seems bright to you guys like it does to me. There we are. Move them to one side. Alright, so now we'll go back to these guys because they have dried. I'm now going to give them a light wash with a bit of the old Agrax Earthshade. Let's get them looking nice and dirty. Nice. Sometimes I wonder if I should put the writing on before doing the Agrax Earthshade. I often see others do it. Nice. There we go. Excellent. Something did occur to me, actually, looking at them. I've just remembered we have a couple of pauldrons that need the parchment work, don't they? May as well dig them out while we're waiting for a couple bits to dry. I think there's just two of them. There's one, and there's the other. Excellent. All right, we'll begin it much like we have the others. With a tad of wraithbone into my wet palette. Not sure how I botched it as much as I did. <laughs> oh, dear. Same old trick with a tiny bit of a crag. Looks very oddly thick, and I've watered it down quite a bit, so don't know what's going on there. Oh well, it's fine. That's excellent. I'll let that one dry also. Right, back to these little screens here. Let's just get, get this technical glow. Giving it a shape like nothing else. Blech. It's certainly green. Damn. It's a green. Cool. It's not perfect, but yeah. Yeah, we'll see how that looks. Sweep. When it's dry. There we go. Right, so now these bad boys are dry. Gonna add the Ushapti bone. Ushapti. Very good. Now the same with its buddy. Buddy, beep, beep, boo. Very good. Nice. Looks really nice. Once that's dry, and then we add the Agrax Earthshade. I bet it will look lovely. You know what? I think now is a good time to attempt this rope. Now, I like how it looks on the box, so I'm gonna attempt that. But what I can't tell is if it is white with a layer of red or red with a layer of white. I'm going to assume white with a layer of red because that just makes the most sense to me. I'm going to best stick you. Yeah, like that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to white scar this fool and see how it goes. Shake, 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 shake. Nothing on this earth needs shaking more than white scar. With the possible exception of Korax. Well, I can already tell this is going to be a fun one, air quotes. Oh goodness, here comes the great unclean one. Please stay away, beast, while I'm doing more precise things. That would be great. I'm sure he's going to respect my wishes. Or are you just going to come and whistle into the microphone? So that's fine, bro. You can do that. Just don't be a pest. But you wouldn't be a pest, would you? You've never been a pest. Apart from all the times you have been. Of course. Oi. What do you want my micro set for? You don't have any models going. You don't have any decals. Oh, God. That's a point. I'm going to have to do all the decals on these, aren't I? Oh, man. Now I'm sad. Because I think that's about the best I'm going to do. Not bad, though. Not bad. I think it might need a little bit more on that short strand. Here he is. Oi, get off the pauldrons. Don't be a nuisance. There we go. I think that's as good as we get. Nice. Get off the guns. Get off the pauldrons. What makes you so nosy right now, bro? Come on. We talked about this. What do you want? Yes, it's freshly painted. Oi, oi, oi. Give me that. No. Ah, thank goodness it survived. Oh, God. What are you... What are you doing? For a minute, I genuinely thought you swallowed one of the pauldrons. <laughs> I don't think he did. Oh, I certainly hope he didn't anyway. Right. Come on, you. I gotta move you because you're being a pest. Oh, you are a pest. Right, so now we will let that dry somewhere. Now, so many comments have said I really need to get me a tiny permanent marker for moments like writing, and they're absolutely right. I just keep forgetting to get round to it. Cat, will you stop sneezing when I'm trying to explain things to the lovely people? I'm not going to necessarily write anything coherent. I'm just going to... There we go. Something like that. So now that on the box they have like ultra written on it and whatnot, which is rather assumptive. But yes, until I get said marker, I'm perfectly happy with insinuated writing as opposed to actual writing. Yeah, I mean it's a mess, but ah well. Right, so now these shoulder pads are dry enough to get a quick little wash in the old Agrax Earthshade. There we go. Right, in every honesty, I think while waiting for that to dry, I may as well get on with doing these bases. And yes. I am still going to do my plain old boring bases because I genuinely like it. Alright, so I'm going to get out of the old 
Mechanicus Standard Grey. Let's get you ready. Yeah, that looks good to me. Excellent. Then hopefully once all these bases have been done, and things like the rope and whatnot will be ready to have their next layer. Right then. Dark magic time. There we go. That's all the bases made grey. It looks rather lovely for it. And now other things are ready to, well, be layered. Let's get on with it. Right, this rope. Now to decide which paint to use. I think Wazdaka Red, watered down. I think that could look quite good. That or Pink Horror. Right, Wazdaka Red. And then I might do an even lighter layer of Pink Horror after the fact. Layers upon layers upon layers. Alright. I think I need to water it down much more. And that, I really do want it quite wet. Let's see what we can do. I was expecting a bit more of the white to shine through, to be honest, but it still looks pretty good. Actually, it's kind of doing it. That's good. Let's be angled down a little bit more. There we go. That's much more comfy. There we go. It's kind of left me with the effects I'm hoping for, more or less. Just a bit more to do there. Cool. Yeah, I'll leave it like that and add the other highlights on. I say as I add a bit more. There we go. Nice. There we go. A bit of the white showing through. Hopefully the pink horror will take care of that. Now these two are dry, they get to have a little bit of writing. There we go. Flawless high gothic script. Don't understand it? Maybe you're just too common. I know I sure don't understand it. Nice. Alright, I just made the decision that I don't like any of the white, so I'm going to get rid of it all. And then we'll instead rely on shading and highlights to get the look I was after. Well, this way did look okay, I suppose. It also kind of looked just a little bit unfinished, I think is the word I'm looking for. There we go. I don't mind a bit of white poking through here and there, but so long as it doesn't look too obvious. Nice. That's much better. Excellent. And now these bases are dry, so we are going to give them a bit of the old Astro Granite. Give them that nice textured look. I've said it several times before, and I will say it again. I will make some of my own with sand and Mechanicus Grey soon. I just keep forgetting. Forgetting like I do, people? It is a talent. But yeah, the reason I do Mechanicus Standard before adding this is simply so that way I can use less of this. There we go. A bit of grit. A bit of grime. Very cool. And there we go. Marvellous. So the texturing done, so that'll look good once it's dried and then uh, shaded up. Right then. Away you go again, boys. I'm now almost more or less out of Astro Granite, so my hands are kind of forced. I'm going to have to make some of my own very shortly. Right, now onto this, wherein I think I'm going to give it a shade of something I've not used before. Berserker Bloodshade, because it's a red color, so I figured uh, why not give it a go and see how it looks. And in the end, if it don't look no good, I can just go over it with something else. Because my expectation is, if it isn't what I need, then it is probably too light. There we go, go on, really. Really get in there, but not quite that much. <laughs> there we go, that's good. Yeah, that looks pretty alright. Nice. Let's quickly flip it over and do this underside. Cool. Very cool. Once that's dry, we'll do highlights. Nice, successful use of the colour. Excellent. You know what, because other than the rope and the base way to dry, the only thing we have left to do is this here head. So, you know what? We're gonna do that. At some point in the future, I'm probably also going to uh, do the other bare heads in there, but for now, this one will do as nicely. Right, so we'll begin with a zoom in. There we go. And then we shall begin with a layer of Wraithbone. I'll use my base brush for this, which does not have a point before anyone starts panicking. So fear ye not, good people. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Very nice. Right, so we'll give this a few minutes to dry, then we'll give it a, another layer. Cool. That does that. Let's have a quick look at this. Yeah, it's nearly dry. Not quite, though. Oh, wait, I do know of something I can do real quick. The knives. Specifically, their handles. I'm gonna paint them a kind of coppery color. I think we'll begin with some Rune Lord brass. I think I'll keep the dark handle inside the fingers there. No, oh, that's good. Nice. Do the other one now, real quick. There we go. Nice. And we'll add shading to it down the line and whatnot, but it will do for now. Excellent. Nice. Right, so and now he's dry. We will add another layer of the old wraith bone. Let's zoom in a bit. There we go. Do 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 do. Under his chinny chin chin. There we go. Excellent. Good. Now we shall look to this rope wherein it is time for its next layer. I'm going to give it just a very quick bit of pink horror. I think that should uh, look just right. Let's see if I put enough on my brush. I did put enough on my brush. Cool, yeah, I think it looks really good. Sorry, my fingers are all over it. Just, there we go. Yeah, I really like that. Cool. I am pleased. All right, so next on the menu, some Rakarth flesh for this fine fellow. Do, 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 do. Let's get him looking human. Well you know, superhuman. Transcendent superhuman. There we go. Cool. 
And you know what? Just because people love them so much, I'm gonna do, cut off a couple of these purity seals here. Snip, 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 and snip. Very nice. You know what? There's another one there. Sorry. Let's do. Let's do three. Snip and snip. Good. Light sand, sand, light sand. Cool. There we go. So I'm going to base all three of these up with wraith bone as well. I have a feeling that might do the trick I'm looking for. Even the seal itself is going to get wraith boned. That came out wrong. Very cool. Very nice. Let's right, jumping back again to the head. We're now going to very quickly give it a wash and Reichland flesh shade. There we go. I nearly couldn't speak, but I did. Never forget to under the chinny chin chin. Oh yeah, look how it goes under the scar. Nice. Very nice. Cool. Excellent. Nice, nice, nice. Now what I think I am going to do, I'm going to quickly move this thing to the edge and make sure... In fact, you know what? No, I'm going to be even smart. I'm just going to roll it over. Or to be exact, I'm going to bloody well try. There we go. That was stubborn. Point being, I'm going to go over the back as well with Wraithbone. Why will you not stick? Stick, damn it. There we go. There we go. Nice. Right, so now I'm going to very carefully dry brush this fool with some uh, Flayed One Flesh. I mean, in theory, that is his skin done. Right. Ooh. I think I did that a bit much, or did I do it just right? That's alright, actually. Yeah, it's alright. Once we have the eyes and the details, it'll look excellent, I think. Cool. Dry brushing it probably wasn't the way to go, but it's the way I don goad. Right, now I can see in the picture that they have a lot of blue on the headwear stuff, but you know what? I'd rather it just be silver, so that's what I'm going to go for. But before... I do the metal work, I'm going to do his hair, and I'm going to see how Doombull Brown looks. I think that could be a cool hair colour. Well, cool, he's a kind of uh, deep brown ginger. <laughs> I like it. Nice, very nice. Alright, I'm back with these seals again. I'm going to put some Ushapti bone onto the parchments themselves. Do, 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 do. Very nice. Cool, very nice. Alright, so now I'm going to do the seals, the wax seals. First basing with corn red. I love this red, I think it looks so good. Very deep, almost purple red. I feel like maybe the seals themselves would have benefited from a darker base coat, while the parchments benefit well from the light, but Eero is fine. There we go. Ooh, well, nearly there we go. Excellent. All right, so for this guy's silver bits, I'm going to give him the old lead belcher treatment. Let's do this. Fresh bit into my palette, please. Do -do 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 -do. Looking very good so far. Cool, well let's get that outside edge. It's going to be rather... There we go. Nice, that's good. Excellent. And you know what? I'm going to write the writing on these now, and then add the Agrax Earthshade, just to see how it looks. Because I get the idea there will be some seals out there that are so old, have been stuck to wherever they're stuck for so long, that they've aged further ever since they were first made. Let's see how awful I can do this. Yeah, that's not too terrible. Well, it is, but it's my kind of terrible. It's my thing. Right, and with them dried off, Agrax Earthshade. Let's see how it looks, shall we? Yeah, it looks alright. Excellent. Nice. Now, the eyes. I've no real idea how best to do them. I'm going to follow my gut instinct. I'm going to use a bit of Corax White. And absolutely tiny dab it in there. Okay. Literally the tiniest bit don't even know if you can see it. There, on the end of my brush. Let us see how this goes. This is going to go... Oh, oh shit, it didn't. It's... I, I don't think it actually did anything. There we go. Damn, okay. Reload! There we go. There we go. It's a little bit more than I intended, but still, it's alright. Right, now for these guys, I'm going to add a bit more of the old pink horror. I say a bit more, I've not added any to it. I'm going to add pink horror to the wet palette. And there we go. Nice. I like it. Cool, cool. Right, so I'm going to wash the silver parts of this guy and his hair, I think, actually, with Nolm Oil. See if I can take them down a couple of shades. Very good. The silver definitely benefits. Now, what about the hair? Nice. Very nice. Cool. Very, very, very cool. Right, and the very last thing I'm going to add to these seals is just at the very top a tiny bit of Emperor's Children. Just a little. Here we go. Very cool. All right then. That's them done. I'll just let it dry. All right then. These bases have now dried. They've got a nice kind of moon texture, if you would. This is just how I like it. So now we're going to wash all the bases with some Nuln oil. Let's see what we get. Oh, here comes a cat. Cat, just stop catting. 
because all my loose bits are on this side. It was very silly of me to do that. All right, mass migration of bits. There we go. Cat, what, what do you want? Leave me be. Leave me and the boys be. We're not ready for this. Wait, don't you do it. I've got my spear. Don't you do it. They're literally, arm they're armless, dude. And headless at the moment. Go away. Go away. Oi, give me him back. Oh no, someone's being taken by the powers of chaos. Come here, you. Give him. <laughs> literally had to grab him by the back leg to stop him leaving. Never grab him by the tail, folks. It's directly connected to the spine. Cat, stop. That's That's got a spike in it. It's dangerous, okay? I play with that. Giving him one of my corks with blue tack on it because he wanted something to play with. But yes, non oil. Let's do it. Do, 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 do. Nice. Very cool. Nice. Eh? I love how it looks, this rock texture. It's so good. All right, so now the last thing I'm going to do before taking him off the stump and magnetizing his neck is I'm going to add the blue to his eyes. So I'm going to make his eyes Altdorf Guard blue, as best I can anyway. I have my tiny brush with literally a bloody point. So I believe it's lost a couple bristles actually or something by the look of it. I swear it was never this thin. Now let's see if this even works. It's so minusculely thin at this point it doesn't even work. All right, I need to get a new one of this type of brush then, alas. Now this is the next smallest, but it has a habit of just not being pointy. Right, I managed to coerce it into a point. So let us see what we can make of this. Oh God, this is, okay. Oh no. Yeah, something <laughs> something like that. Alright, it's not quite as utterly wired as that first time I ever did eyes back on the Devastator Squad, but still, I actually also kind of wonder, would shading it help make it a little more human? Alright, what is going to happen if I add the slightest bit of Reichland? I mean, he definitely has a bit of a lazy eye, but still. You know what he doesn't have? He doesn't have any eyebrows. Do Space Marines have eyebrows? You know, I don't normally pay attention to the the eyebrow gig. All right, well, he's gonna get Space Marine eyebrows. Why am I doing this? What is wrong with me? I have a perfectly good head, and here I am determined to absolutely fuck this shit up. Now he's got eyebrows. Okay, that's not too bad. Or something. <laughs> It'll do. He's got a slightly raised eyebrow, like, what have you done to me, man? Yeah, all right, no, cool, I like it. Right. Now let us just quickly magnetize this fool. That went across the room. Send, 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 send. Lovely. Right. Here's our magnet. We'll quickly borrow a comrade. Oh, there we go. Yep, just so we can see which orientation the magnet needs to be. The glue. There we go. All right, so I now know the magnet has to go that way. So let's do this. Get you nice and central. All right, cool. And we'll just let that sit off to the side to dry. Cheers, comrade. All right, well now, unfortunately, it is the time. It is the time for the decals. No escaping it. Let's do a quick count of how many we have. Okay, so we have 20 shoulders in all. 10 pairs. So what I'm probably going to do, I know the shoulder that they have the ultramarine symbol on remains, for lack of a better word, unsullied. It's not one of these uh, fancy ones here, for instance. This row of two, I'm going to make them entirely with ultramarine symbols. And this row, I'm going to make entirely with the front line. That's it, the battle line symbol. All right then, I guess we better get rolling. So I'm going to keep the piles clearly distinct from each other. Right, so we shall begin with the ultramarine symbols. So getting out my bottles of Microset and Microsol. It's off screen, but I'm going to have some tissue paper that I have wetted. And I'm going to cut out the decals and leave them resting upon it to uh, soften up or wet up, whatever the appropriate term you want to use is. Now, annoyingly, at some point, I think the cat's still on it, it's all dirty and whatnot, but thankfully, the bits with the ultramarines is fairly undirty, so that's good. I mean, actually, no, I don't need to do it as one big sheep because I've got all that bit to hold on to up there, so that's good. Snippity snip. Nice, just laying them all out now on my trusty piece of wet. It's just a piece of wet. It ain't no tissue paper. Right, so while they're soaking up a bit, I may as well cut out the battle lines, of which thankfully there are exactly 10 on here. And the only annoying part is there isn't as much uh, stuff to grab onto, so I think what I'm gonna end up doing is keeping this together as one big piece, and then once a couple are off, eh, then maybe I can start dividing them up. Oh, that was a little close, that one. Never mind. All right, it's cool. There's the first one. Oh, wait, no, we don't need that yet. So, first comes a quick little wash with the old micro sole. Uh, sorry, micro set, not micro sole, that comes after. There we go. This one's sliding cooperatively so far. It's certainly cooperating much more than the tank's decals did. Oh, man. There we go. 
everyone in the squad's going to be fighting over who does or doesn't get the janky shoulders. And touching together a bit weird up there, though. Let's have a bit of that separation, please. There we go. Okay. It's uh, <laughs> not particularly pretty, but it works. Nice. That's one. Ah, uh, decals. I swear. Decals is the work of demons, my friends. Thankfully, if any of these go truly tits up, I do have some spares. But only a few. I'm talking like maybe two. There you go. You know, that's a bit more cooperative. Again, not perfect, but near as damn it. I'm gonna try doing it this way. Do it upside down. Nice, nice. Doing it upside down was easier, so... We're gonna see if that was a fluke, or if it really is the case. Here we go. Nice. Right, and with varying degrees of success, the Ultramarine symbols are now on ten pauldrons. Excellent. So now, we're going to carefully brush these aside so I don't mess them up. And we're going to move on now to the battle line ones on the other shoulders. Now this shoulder. I'm probably going to do this one first just because it looks like an absolute bastard. An absolute bastard! There we go. Let's get it ready. There we are. Slide that to the edge. Get my trusty tweezers. Grab that. There we go. Okay. Now I'm thinking for it to look decent. I'll have to snip a little bit off the side, won't we? Just a little bit off this corner. So small. Well, nothing happened, so never mind. We're just going to roll with it. Okay, it's not too bad, actually. Right, so there we go. Definitely looks a bit jank, but hopefully once we have the microsol, that will look all right. Hopefully, with that one done, the rest will be a breeze. I'm glad I did the ultramarine symbol first, because the arrows are so much easier. Nice. Right, and the last one. There we go. No matter what I do, it never seems to be straight. Looks fine from one angle. There we go. Then from another, it doesn't. But that is near as damn it. No, it's not. Come on, man. Why is the last one being so difficult? Work, damn it. Okay, that's good enough. And with that, that's all the other shoulders now. Excellent. Again, not perfect, but I'm hoping once I add the old micro sole, that will help. We shall see. Let's micro set. We screwed. There we go. I'm gonna put them to one side while I go and work on the original ones. Right, micro sole. Glory be to micro set and micro sole, making things look more decent than they otherwise would, meaning I don't have to gain any skills. Because there are some folks who draw them on directly, and I mean, I've not tried it myself, so I can't say if it's, you know, a good or a bad way to do it. But I salute such people for having the necessary skills to do so. Very cool. Right, so now they're dry. Next we'll do the same with these ones here. Oh, you're moving. You're not supposed to move. There we go. Well, this one got utterly screwed. That's no worry. You know what? Speaking of drawing on and painting on, I can just repair that later. There we go. Right, so we'll just let them dry. So while those are drying, let's have a quick look at the head here. It's looking good. Magnet looks solid. Alright, uh, let's just grab a volunteer. Stick. Nice. Very, very nice. Good. Come here. Let's try them on another body as well. Excellent. Good, good, good. That's what I like. You know what? While we have these guys here, now seems like a good time to dry brush these bases. The Nolan Oil appears to be dry. Let's do that. Now, last time I tried to dry brush it with Dawnstone, but that didn't really achieve much. This time I'm going to use a slightly lighter colour. I'm going to use Administratum Grey, just to see what kind of effect that may achieve. It's not bad. Perhaps a little whiter than I would like. Or does it look alright? Hmm, I can't decide what I think of it. You know what? I think it is alright. Or do I? No, I don't. Okay, you know what? I'm going to dry brush over it again with old Dawnstone. Well, first off, dry brush over one that hasn't been hit by the Administratum. And just see how it ends up looking. Side by side, a comparison. Don't actually really look much different, but when I dry brush over the Administratum, it definitely darkens it. All right, cool. We'll just keep with the Dawnstone then. Right, let's get dry brushing. Plus doing it this way gives it a little bit of grime on the, on the boots. Like they've been kicking up a bit of dust and whatnot, so that's rather cool. Pretty good. Ooh, there's a little bit under the shoe there that I don't really like, so I'm just going to quickly flick that out. Flick. Is it flick? There we go. Go away. Good. That looks better. Right. And the last one. Cool. All right, nice. And again, they've got a nice bit of grime on their shoes there. Just a little. It's lovely. Cool. All right. And now I genuinely believe that with all that, it's time to actually assemble them. Maybe for the final time. All right, then. So we just need to sort of come to a decision about who's using what, if we would. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Nice. I think this one here might be the uh, the sergeant. Cool. Get this guy here who's just whipped out his pistol. Nice. Here's this guy with the underslung. Very cool. Of course, there's also the obligatory reloading guy. Nice. 
We'll just quickly have someone else with a good old rifle. Can't go wrong with that. Excellent. Someone who was in the midst of a reload but had to quickly draw his knife. Very cool. And the last fella. What can you be doing? I'm gonna scratch and rewind. And we'll have someone here who... There we go. Nice. He's got his knife out. Cool. And you know what? I think for this last guy, we'll give him a scoped rifle. A bolter. A, stalk, a stalker bolter. That's it. Maybe he'll look some cool direction or something. Nice. All right, now for the heads. Not the arm, you silly. Damn. He looked broody. Mean and broody. They might have him face the same way as the gun. All right. This geezer here. Looking that way. Very cool. I like it. This fellow here. Fairly predictably looking forwards. Excellent. Reload, man, Stan. Boop. Oh, God, they're all going to have names now. Nice. He's just in a reload. Ah, yes. A sergeant fella. There we go. Nice. My question B. I think of him just a normal blank head. But nah, differentiates him too much. He hasn't earned it yet, but he will. In the meantime, we just have to be helmed. Very cool. Very cool. And this fella, I'm looking a little bit in that direction. Excellent. Ah, yes. Underslung fellow. Very good. Let's have this one simply looking the way the gun is going, of course. There we go. Very, very nice. And the last one. Let me just have you. There we go. Nice. Very cool. Alright then, so now we have these guys assembled, now they just need to have their shoulders put on. Right, so, what I'm thinking of for the shoulders, which are now here and done, is having them simply blue tacked on. Nice and simple. Sometimes the simple methods really are the best. Alright, just a little bit. Are we talking a sliver? Oop. Like that. Super thin. Now do I put it inside the pauldron, or I'm, you know, I'm going to put it on the shoulder first. Do you want me to take this off for a sec? Oh god, the damn decal came off. What does it take, man? Why are you evil? I honestly thought you'd stuck. Okay, it is truly a work of chaos. Right, we'll let that sit over there for a while and think about what it's done. In the meantime, we're going to grab another one and be more careful with it. Yeah, that's stuck on pretty nice, okay. Excellent. All right. Those look really good. I love it. All right. I'm just going to fast forward and get all the others uh, their pauldrons. Greetings, brothers. This is awkward, but it appears that this idiot lost the footage of him attaching the pauldrons and then the purity seals to my battle brothers. So he will have to skip ahead to the final part. I apologize on this heretic's behalf. Oh, but wait. I've just remembered. One more thing that needs doing. My trademark thing that annoys people. The Macrag Blue Rim. Right then, let's do that and then they're done. That's the Sarge. Excellent. You can still see like the Purity Seal's holding on pretty well. So that's... That's good. Yep, that's two. Okay, that's three. Here comes trouble. Four-legged trouble with the plagues. Hello, buddy. Come to grant us your blessings in the final hurdle. No, you're just gonna sit awkwardly at the edge. Alright. You do you, pal. Nice. There you go. And quick reminder before anyone loses their minds, this brush is the brush without the tip. So it's just uh, a flathead, if you would. The brush equivalent of a flathead. There you go. What I would love to do down the line regarding the blue tack and the pauldrons is maybe find a way to magnetize them. You know, stick in a magnet inside the shoulder and then stick a magnet into the pauldron themselves. However, I can't guarantee how well that would work. That's why I haven't tried it yet. Because, uh, for instance, the Sarge here, the blue tack has to be on the very top of the shoulder, effectively actually sticking it to the torso, whereas this has the blue tack towards the bottom, sticking it to the arm. So as a result, different places of stick for different shoulders. And then if it gets to the point where I have dedicated pauldrons to certain torsos, at that point I may as well not bother making them modular. But, however, I will probably one day just give it a go just to see how it is. You know, when I have some spare shoulders and spare pauldrons. There we go. Good position. There we are. There we go. That's the last one. All right then, cool beans. And that is this squad actually good and done. Right, well, I'm really, really proud of them. I had a thought a couple of times while doing these models. I didn't say anything at the time, though. But I realized that I had a color in mind and I used knowledge I had gleaned in order to achieve that color. You know, what base and then what layer and then what shading and what highlighting and whatnot. So I think it's finally happened, guys. I think I'm no longer a noob. I think I'm now an amateur, and I'm very proud to say it. And I want to give many, many thanks to all of the great advice and tips I've got from you guys, because that's why it's possible. So I thoroughly appreciate it. Thank you so kindly for helping me get this far on the journey so far. 
Right, let's put you back in here. Right then, and that concludes the Intercessors. So if you guys did enjoy watching me build and paint these fine, fine fellows, then please do like, comment, and subscribe slash follow, depending on where you're watching this. And I will see you all for the next one. All right, boys, let's roll.